everyone. Um, the following series of tutorials will cover programming in RectX 11, or in our case specifically game programming in Rect 3D 11. The main goal of this series is to provide a solid understanding of low-level game engine or framework development. Individual subjects will be covered in theory, and all of them will be combined in one project where they are practically applied. There is no set ending to this series, but throughout the series you, series you should start to get the hang of it and be able to work on your own. Of course, you shouldn't rely on this tutorial alone. A serious programmer should always be asking himself questions, and be curious about a little neat tricks only one book or tutorial doesn't provide. My only intention is to, is to teach you a proper understanding of the graphics pipeline and other game development related necessities. The viewer is expected to have a solid C++ and trigonometry knowledge, but less common subjects will be explained as in-depth as I find necessary. Then one last thing, I am using Visual Studio 2013 with the Windows 8 SDK. That means if you have an existing project using the standalone SDK from June 2010, certain namespaces, classes and functions will be different. It's pretty easy to port existing code to the new Windows 8 SDK and to handle that matter I will put a link below. So, the first tutorial will cover entry points. Now, why do I cover entry points? It's not necessarily related to game programming or graphics programming or development, but I think it's important to know the differences between their signatures and why you should prefer one over another. I think you will see the importance later. Now, what is an entry point? An entry point is a starting point of execution for all programs. In most programming languages, it's main. The return type can be different. Sometimes uh, it's a void, for example. But in C++, the standard signature is int main without arguments. These three arguments you see here are optional. The first argument, which is optional, is an integer which contains the count of arguments that follow in the second argument. This is an array of null terminated strings representing the command line arguments entered by the user. By convention, the first element in this array is the command with which the program is invoked, meaning this is usually the file name or the path or directory of the current program that is running at that time. All the following elements in the array are the actual command line arguments, all the way up until it's null. As I said, it's null terminated, so you don't necessarily need this first argument to loop through all the elements in the array. The third argument is also a st uh, an array of uh, strings representing the variable sets in the user's environment. You will see what that is later. As I said, these three uh, arguments are optional, so what is possible? Int main without arguments, int main with the first two arguments, or int main with all three arguments. Now, as you can see, this is uh, an array of null terminated strings, so you can represent that by either with either a double character pointer or an array of single character pointers. So, a single character pointer with brackets. You can choose one of these two, it doesn't matter, it's personal preference. I prefer the double pointer. I have uh, coded a little example below. First I output the argument count, which is contained in the first argument, 
through the default standard uh, system output stream CDC out. Next, I loop through all the elements in the array in the second argument with a do while um, structure. Now, why do I use a do while? Why, why can I use this and not a for loop, for example? As I said, this is null terminated. The last element is null or zero, so I can just add one to the pointer all the way up until I find it's null or zero. Same for the third argument, which is also an array. I loop through it, add one to the pointer all the way up, I, I find it's null or zero. At the end, the program waits for the user to press enter and exits with a return code of zero. As I said, in the main is standard C++. The first two optional arguments are also standard C++. The third argument is Microsoft specific. It's not necessarily only working on Windows platforms, but it's not supported by all compilers. Keep that in mind. Int w, w main, on the other hand, is entirely Microsoft specific, meaning it's not standard C. It's almost the same, except this is the Unicode version, meaning I use white characters instead of normal characters, so w character underscore t instead of character. Same here, double pointer or array of single pointers. The example is also the same, except I use stdwc out instead of stdc out, since they are white strings. Otherwise, it will probably uh, output the wrong results, wrong values. I'm not sure about that. So, these are the first two options. Again, here, in w uh, main without arguments, in w main with the first two arguments, or in w main with all three arguments. It's all possible. A third option is using underscore t main also an integer. Underscore T main is also Microsoft specific. T probably stands for type. Underscore T main resolves to main when Unicode is not defined. It resolves to W main, so the Unicode version, when Unicode is defined. Now, keep in mind, it looks at Unicode definitions without underscore instead of Unicode with underscore. But you will see in the Windows headers, Unicode without underscore is always defined when Unicode with underscore is defined. So I suggest you use this instead of this. Also, when you use tmain, you have to change both the name and the types. So, you have to use a T character instead of a white character or a normal character. T character is also a Microsoft definition. It resolves to either a normal character or a white character, depending on the Unicode definition. Character or white character with capitals is also um, a Microsoft definition but it's just the same as, as this or this. And a fourth option is using void main. Now, a void main is also Microsoft specific. It's not standard C++, and I highly suggest you don't do this. You use, you always use an integer. Since uh, when you use void main you cannot return an exit code so when you suddenly want to exit your program 
you would use an exit function like std exit or std abort. And in my opinion, that is very bad practice. These four options are for normal programs, you could say. The last possibility I have here is for um, graphical Windows-based programs or applications. Int double underscore std call winmain. So the arguments are first an h instance. An h instance is a handle to the current instance or module of the application. The operating system uses this value to identify the executable when it is loaded in memory. And that is pretty much all there is to know of it. We will use this type later in when our um, project is a bit bigger. Just keep in mind you have to include this in your WinMain signature. Second argument is also an H instance except this one has no meaning at all. The first argument has a meaning. The second argument is always null or zero. Um, previously it has a meaning, it had a meaning but not anymore right now. The third argument is um, a, a PSTR. I'm sorry, the, that's a little mistake. A PSTR or just a string, if we look that up, big definition, it's a character pointer. BWSTR, on the other hand, big definition, is a white character pointer, which is used in the Unicode version of WinMain, W WinMain. The fourth argument is an integer, or an enumeration, which determines how the window is to be shown. You can look these enumerations up in the Windows SDK on their website. As I said, this is a default WinMain. WinMain is Unicode version. The only, the only thing where it differs from this one is the third argument, the command line, one full string, is a white string here, uh, here it's a normal string. Alright, if you find yourself in a situation where you have no access to the command line, you would use get command line. Get, com get command line resolves to either get command line A or get command line W depending on whether Unicode is a fine or not. I suggest you use get the get command line A or get command line W directly so you know what the return type is. Get command line A returns a character pointer, get command line W returns a white character pointer. When you have access to the command line, you would pass this to command line to RGVW, which splits this one full string into separate arguments in an array. Keep in mind, this is not null terminated in comparison to all the other arrays we have discussed previously. This is the only one which is not null terminated. And finally, the calling convention double underscore std call. A calling convention is an implementation level or low-level scheme for how subroutines receive parameters from their caller and how they return a result. That's more on assembly level than um, than on high-level programming. You shouldn't really know more about it right now. We will use other calling conventions in the future, um, but when it's important I will discuss it. Alright, um, right. one more thing, instead of defining Unicode in, s in a CPP file or in a header file in actual source code, 
you could just as well do this in your project properties or project configuration configuration properties general character sets if you set it to use unicode character sets it will equal defined underscore unicode um, if you use multiplied character sets it will equal um, not e it's the same as when unicode is not defined If it's not set, um, well, it's not set. You would set it in your source, in your source code yourself, and that's actually what I prefer to do, not set. So I can set it here if I want to. Um, I haven't yet shown the example, I believe, so let's do that now. Execute as expected. The first output is the argument count one. Um, what we see here is the first element in the array in the second argument. Since there is only one element, this is the file or the path or the directory of the program that is running right now. And all the other um, values are the user's environment variables. A whole bunch of information that I don't need. As I said, all the following arguments after the first in this array are the actual command line arguments. Now, you would enter those either through the command line or by dragging files over the executable. I can show this um, with an example. Rebuild in release. Um, release. I have a few f random files here. When I drag these over the executable we see here the first element in the array is is expected the actual program's um, file name or path and the following items are in order the files which I have dragged over the executable something else um, Well, the, 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 the header files which I have included via stream for the system uh, output stream, uh, T character for T character definition, and Windows.h for the WinMain um, entry point signature. Why do I define Win32 lean and mean? If I look this up, Lean and main. If this is defined, it will exclude um, a whole set of header files which I don't need, and this will speed up the compilation time. This will fasten compilation of the program. And shell api.h if you would use command line dot, dot to arch v. But normally you wouldn't need this. That covers it for this tutorial. I thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.